Right, let's continue the show, shall we? I've got stuff to do. Namely, after this, I'll be taking a shower. I think I'm supposed to use my save state. Yep. Alright, that is very loud. Let me lower that for you guys. Let me lower it for myself. Ta-da! <coughs> Alright, let's begin cross-examination. Who would steal a body just to match some lyrics? I'm drinking some fruit juice right now, by the way. I didn't believe it myself, but it can't just be a coincidence. It is a Sproyline, Detective Sess. Let us begin with the first verse, if you would, Sproyline Detective. What? You want me to sing it? You are the witness, Ja, or did you want me to sing? I warn you, my fee as a vocalist is not trivial. Fine, fine. Er, ahem. Let's look at the first part of the lyrics, shall we? When you stole away the keys, my heart held on to so tight. Indeed, my favorite heart-shaped keyring was stolen that morning. Next, we go to the right page of the lyrics sheet. Where we find a burning on in my heart, fire, fire. Burn my love away, all away. As we know, Prosecutor Gavin's guitar burst into flame. You rhyme all away with all away and fire with fire. Amazing. Like a bullet of love, fire, take my life away, all away. Mr. Latouse's life was taken by a bullet. Bravo, Fräulein Detective. You're singing. It's not bad. Now for the finale. Guitar, guitar, up together to the sky. As it says in the lyrics, Mr. Latouse was found with a guitar high in the sky over the stage. No series of coincidences could be so well conceived. He's right, scientifically speaking. Who would walk him said? That concert was whack. <laughs> it's hard to argue when she pours her heart into it like that. Ah, uh, er, ahem, anyway, the shooter. Amazing. That was the best. <laughs> Does the prosecution have any idea why he'd do all this? You want my scientific opinion? No clue. But he clearly had a reason to go through all that trouble. Some deep reason. A deep reason? Not only did he steal my keys, he torched my guitar. Unforgivable acts, even if he had a reason. And worse if he had none. The diva's complaints aside, I can't imagine someone doing this just on a whim. Broilein, detective, I take offense at that description. Indeed, it does seem too well rehearsed, shall we say. Yes, this crime was planned for sure. But, Mr. Lutu spoke English. You may have come to this country before. I looked into that, I assure you. Oh. That was his first time in the country, it seems. Apparently he learned English on his own. Great. You see? No one here had a motive to kill him. And certainly not in such an elaborate fashion. Hmm. It does seem difficult to imagine. Unless our famous prosecutor did it as a publicity stunt. What did you say? Prosecutor Gavin, you did this to promote your song? 
course not, and I am quite dismayed by the ludicrous nature of her claim. Why would I need promotion? Everyone already listens to my music. They're even in my textbook at school. And I'd never heard of them. What does that say about me? I was just kidding. They'll get all worked out, Glimmer Boy. What do you mean by his signature? The bullet holes in the wall, of course. The bullet holes? The revolver was fired twice. One shot missed and left a hole in the wall. And that means what exactly? That dressing room isn't exactly spacious. Picture the shooter facing off with the victim in there. They can't have been more than five feet apart. Would be difficult. Almost impossible to miss at that range. Difficult to miss, you say? Very. Assuming the shooter could properly aim. No! You can't be serious! Machi, he can't see. That's why he missed. The only explanation that makes sense. He sounded other senses to fire the gun. Poorly. That reminds me, the monitor in that room was blaring at the time, Ja. Hardly ideal conditions for tracking by sound. A blind shooter. No wonder he missed. And those bullet holes have come back to haunt me. Thank justice, what do I do now? Let's try raising an objection. Sure, there were bullet holes left in the wall. But that doesn't prove the shooter couldn't see. Oh, how so? Well, there could have been a struggle with the victim. Hmm, that's certainly possible. And, might have been the revolver's fault. The revolver? The revolver was a very large caliber, correct? If the shooter wasn't used to firing such a large weapon, why it could dislocate their shoulder? Exactly. The defendant Machi Tobai is, as you can see, tiny. Not so hard to picture him firing the gun and missing entirely. The kickback alone would throw off his aim. A convincing argument, to be sure. Haha, take that smug prosecution. You, you know what you just did, um, Apollo? Huh, what? That bit about Machi being tiny and the gun throwing off his aim. Um, aren't you kind of, um, admitting that he did it? <laughs> oh. Does not matter why he missed. What matters is that the shooter was, without a doubt, the defendant. Even the defense seems to agree on that point. Oh! <laughs> Well, let's get to the facts of the matter on the record, if you would, Broiline Detective. Very well, the witness will add this to her testimony. Right. I can't say he was blind just because of those bullet holes in the wall. I think I've proven that. I wouldn't call it proof per se. Huh? You merely raised a possibility. Fraulein Detective has made a most logical conjecture based upon the evidence. Of course, there is more evidence than just bullet holes. The defendant was the only one who could have escaped through the air vent. Wait, if he was blind, how would he know about the air vent in the first place? Ah, very good point. Well, Fräulein Detective, if you would care to explain. Certainly seems sure of himself. I call the crime scene, if you would. There's a stepladder below the air vent. As it happens, maintenance was scheduled for that day. Custodial staff went around checking all the air vents. I don't believe it. Everyone backstage was told about the maintenance. Including Machi Tobai. He would have known that there would be a way out at the top of that step ladder. That's... Why is this the first time I'm hearing about this? You could have figured it out for yourself. You only needed to consider what that step ladder was doing there. Nope, we were too busy... Having an argument about calling them stairs or ladders or step ladders. <laughs> <sighs> Looks like the defense's objection has been squashed by a step ladder. Well, her forehead... Out of ammunition, perhaps? I've uh, seen Prosecutor Gavin so... so aggressive. 
Maybe he's caught the scent of blood. Polo, don't you have something? Anything? You know what we need? We need something to prove the killer could see. That'll put him in his place. Proving the shooter was sighted would do it. it would take down one of their central points. Do we have any evidence that can prove that, though? I've got just the thing! Fine, I accept the prosecution's challenge. As I knew you would, her forehead. Exactly am I up against here. The prosecution is saying the shooter missed because he or she couldn't see. Therefore, Machi, who's blind, did it. The defense will please present their evidence. Evidence that overturns the prosecution's claim that the shooter couldn't see. That one looks suspicious. It was smudged over. Intentionally. This is that evidence! A photograph of the crime scene? I don't care much for this smirk on Prosecutor Gavin's face. But this is no time to think twice. Time to press on! Yes, Your Honor. The crime scene! There's something in here that decisively contradicts the prosecution's point. And perhaps you'd best show us this something. Get your finger out of the breeze and put it to good use, Ja. Very well. Show us what you're talking about, Mr. Justice. The contradiction at the scene of the crime is... Take that! Contradiction is right here. The smeared bloodstains. Hmm. I thought it was just my blurry vision. But it really was blurry. The way the victim's hand is raised above his head. Much like a gesture. I have seen many times in this court. Thomas as if he wrote something. Aha, I get it. At least I think I get it. Get what, Fräulein? When Mr. Latouze was shot, he tried to write something. And what would he write but the shooter's name? What would he write in it but his own... What would he write it in but his own blood? Pretty good, huh? Thanks for making my point for me. Yes, in fact, that's what I think happened here. Hmm, it does seem to be a distinct possibility. The victim wrote the killer's name. Certainly a logical conclusion. Drat, I just wish it wasn't all rubbed out like that. Of course it's rubbed out. Why, if I were a killer, I certainly wouldn't want to leave my own name behind. Neither would I. Um, no one has anything else to say? About what? So the prosecution accepts this. You agree this was the victim making an attempt to record the name of the killer? And that the killer tried to rub the name out? What's your point? What's my point? Let me ask you this. How did the killer know the victim was writing their name? Well, Mr. Latus was writing something in blood. Once the killer saw that, it was... Wait. Once he saw what it was? What well, did you just testify about the shooter? I said they were blind. Ah! Yet the crime scene itself contradicts that. The killer had to have been able to see. Why would they rub out the name in the blood otherwise? Uh, uh. May I remind the court that the defendant Machi Tobaye is blind. He couldn't have seen the sh he couldn't have been the shooter. Uh, impossible. Order, order, order! Prosecutor Gavin, please explain to me what all this means. I mean, looking at this photo, it seems quite clear that the shooter could see. Yet up until now, it seems I owe the court an apology. Hmm? The governors are a band with law enforcement ties, yet a murder occurred during our concert, apparently this caused some confusion over jurisdiction. As a result, some reports were not filed in an entirely timely manner. That autopsy report is updated. Outdated vibes is what I'm getting, Apollo. I don't like it either. Hey, Apollo, look at him. That's Prosecutor Gavin all relaxed and smiling like that. You know something we don't? And he's about to tell us? <laughs> I've got an idea. Let's rock! With these documents. But before that, I have a question for the Freulein detective, if I may. With what? Tell me, why do you think that Machi Tobias is blind? Huh? 
Well, what did he say? What are you saying? Of course he's blind. Of course. He, he's the blind pianist, right? So, so he's... Does Lamiroir lead him around by the hand all the time? No way. I report here on the defendant Machi Tobai. According to this, Machi Tobai can see perfectly well. What? It's all just for the image. His blindness was merely a publicity ploy by all those clever Borginians. He can see quite well. Then why? But you said... What did I say exactly? Her forehead not once in the course of this trial. But they claimed the defendant was blind. The only one who did that was Froylein Detective. But that's... Significant fact, yes. Consider Machi Tobias East. He was the only one who could have fled through the air vent. I see no problems with this. But what about the bullet holes in the wall? Yes, the bullet holes. I believe her forehead neatly explained those for us. He didn't miss because he couldn't see. It was the kickback from the 45 caliber revolver. A simple accident, in other words. Damn! How's that? I'm afraid your objection has just flown off for brighter skies. Ugh. This is where the real fun begins, her forehead. Yarg! I knew you didn't have what it took. You, you jerk! Just what was I in here for? Comic relief? Yeah, apologize! <laughs> oh, sorry. That's no way to apologize. Sanger the Trucy now, look out. Um, if we can please end the bickering now. Whatever, I'm not leaving. I can't leave like this. I'll come up with some clue to solving this case even if it kills me. But your testimony has already given us enough to convict the defendant. Uh, don't say that. Ah ha ha! Ah uh, ha what? This blood stain. The criminal tried to wipe it off, right? That seems to be what happened, yes. We might be able to find out what was really written there. Really? You can do that? That's right, with this. It's called luminol. Maybe you know of it? It's a chemical that reacts to blood. Ah uh, yes, have we done those tests yet? Ha, huh, as if I'm going to tell you. The blood stains covered a section of the carpet. In order to perform blood tests, that section was removed and submitted. Perhaps we should request it here in court now. Right, go for it, Apollo. Huh? I have to do the test? You just have to spray the luminol in it. Simple. Chemical that reacts to blood. Ever looked this somewhere? Yes, I believe an analysis is called for. How about it? Do, 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 do. Right, ready? It's easy as pie. Just touch the screen to spray it in the area. Here, give it a try. The eyes of the entire quarter are focused on me. Apollo, your hands are shaking. Uh, <laughs> let's do this. I, B, X, Y, three, one, four, two, O, oh, six. What? Wow, it really works. This must be this must be the power of science. It says IPXX314206. Is that the killer's name? Hmm, maybe it is. If the killer was a robot, aha, I have it. So what is it? I thought those letters IPXX looked familiar. It's an Interpol ID number. Interpol? You mean the International Police Agency? Yes, most are undercover agents working to solve international crimes. Why would you write that number? Why would Mr. Latus even know a number like that? Good show, Fräulein Detective. Rock on. Eh? Your Honor, we can verify this number immediately. Darian, are you there? Come up to the witness stand. Bruh. Darian, you heard what we need. Go check into this Interpol ID number. Sure thing. Give me 30 minutes. No, 27. 
Hmm, I'm not sure what to think of all this. The prosecution's case is airtight, or so it seems. Yet if this number is really that of an Interpol agent... Oh, wait, I know. What if Machi Tobias really an undercover Interpol agent? That would be a possibility. A possibility, yes. And one that would mark him as the killer for certain. Why did Latus know an Interpol ID number? That's what I want to know. Well, we have some time while we wait for Darian's report. Let's work on unraveling another mystery, shall we? A curious mystery concerning Machi Tobai. What are you talking about? Broiline Detective, please accept my apologies. I received word that the defendant could, in fact, see just before the trial began. It seemed too much of a bother to tell you. You had me until that last bit. Does this not raise a rather straightforward question? Well, sure. Why did Machi pretend he couldn't see? Exactly, it makes little sense. What do you think, her forehead? Huh, me? Machi Tobai pretended he was blind. Do you know why? How could he know? Wait, Prosecutor Gavin knows why, doesn't he? He's known from the start of the trial. He's been leading us on the whole time. Hmm, something wrong. Do you think perhaps this is all some kind of game? Know that the moment I heard that report, I knew why. Hmm, I suppose people who have sold over a million records really are something else. What does that have to do with anything? There's a reason why Machita Bai pretended to be blind, but it wasn't for his own sake. Getting the picture now? It wasn't for himself? Well, Mr. Justice, can you present evidence to show us why the defendant had to feign blindness? I think I know why. Machi had no reason for that he couldn't see. Which means, no, it couldn't be. Good show, her forehead. It seems you've thought of something. Ah, why can't I figure these things out on my own? I'm having to take my cues from this guy. Very well, look at this. This is why he was pretending he couldn't see. Wait, shit. I thought I could present the profile for this. I should have just said no, I didn't know. Alright, hold on. I gotta do something real quick.
I can only think of this thing. What is that supposed to mean? I don't see how it relates to the defendant's vision or lack thereof. I'll well, see it is the wrong piece of evidence. When they got on stage, she would lead him to the piano. She'd walk all the way over there with him. Oh! This thing. God damn it. Let him at all times. All times. All times. Hmm. And we know now that Machi could see perfectly well. Why keep up the charade? Well, wasn't it part of their uh, performance? There's a simpler explanation, her judge. Machi did not need to be led by the hand at all, which means... Ah, you don't mean... I do, it was the other way around. The one who needed to be led by the hand was Lamiroir. What? What's this? So you mean to say that Lamy Roar is... She's blind as a bat, her judge. What? What? <coughs> order! 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 This is crazy, Prosecutor Gavin. Yeah, wasn't she supposed to be the landscape painter in sound or something? Well, since we have her here... Why not ask Lamy Roar herself? I believe she is still in the witness waiting room. Apollo, what does this mean for our case? Don't ask me, I had no idea she couldn't see. That explains a lot. I hadn't even imagined it until now. Bailiff, bring in Lamiroir. Lamiroir. It pains me deeply to call you before us again in this way. And yet I must. Please do not be concerned on my behalf. Besides, you really can't see, really? It is true. How funny it is that a tiny lie born in the Borginian countryside would one day grow to entangle the entire world. So, so you are? Yes, as I mentioned before. I have no memory of the time before I became Lamirar. Know too that my memories begin in darkness. The word light has no meaning for Lamirar. I see. You may recall me saying something toward the beginning of this trial, her forehead. What's that? I believe I said it was unfortunate this crime had no direct witnesses. Ah, now Lamivoir, I must ask you to stand once more. Will you testify to the court about your eyes? Of course. It was never my intent to deceive any of you. May I begin, Your Honor? Oh yes, yes of course. Though I admit I'm a little lost here. I think we're all a bit lost here, Your Honor. I have no memory of the light. I debuted in a world of darkness and sound. My producer came up with my PR line before he knew this. So silly as it may sound, I had to pretend I could see. Everyone on my staff knew, of course, but no others. But this is a murder trial. I apologize, it was part of my contract, you see. I was to keep my blindness a secret no matter what. That's what she was, hmm. 
Music is everything for me. I never imagined something like this would. She told us the truth in the beginning, and she said she saw nothing. Very well, does the defense have anything to add? I'd like to cross-examine. But what is there left to ask? There is one thing in her testimony that bothered me. Perhaps it is best we let you get it out of your system. Someday you'll come to understand the importance of thinking for yourself. Very well, the defense may proceed. However, be aware this court will not tolerate any questions deemed too stressful to the witness. Okay. Only one part that bothered me. Just let me ask about that and I'll be happy. No bracelet. know why you went blind. I do not. I may have been born this way, in fact. It's fruitless to attempt to pry into her past, and I might add it's a delicate subject. I'm not sure we can reasonably expect Mr. Justice to do anything delicately. Hey, why I oughta... Take a deep breath and calm down. But I am now all that I have. It is enough, I think. Aren't you nervous to hit the stage in your condition? No, not at all, surprisingly. But natural singing in front of everyone. Not something just anyone can do. She has talent, that much is quite clear. You might even say she is beloved by the gods of music. Even without love, light, I live perfectly happy in my world of sound. That is a talent you say, then I thank the gods responsible. What's your PR motto? Perhaps your music reminded them of the Virginian scenery? Ah, uh -huh, no, it was quite the opposite. The opposite? According to my producer, my music has a certain global quality. Global? Multicultural, if you will. Hard to pin to one region. When people listen to it, they picture the country closest to their hearts. Which is why my music has reached so many. What a lovely story. Sounds like this producer might have known what he was doing after all. My songs are nothing more than a white canvas. To me, the real landscape painter are the listeners. When I think of that, I do not mind how I am represented to the world so much. Yet one thing quickly led to another. Is that to protect your image as the landscape painter and sound? That does not matter so much to me, really. But the label is quite concerned about it, I think. A landscape painter who can't see, that's like a pianist who can't play, huh? Not sure you can compare your father to Lamarar. The world of commercial music is filled with these little white lies. Yep. Nothing is sacred when it comes to some publicity. When you say your staff, do you include Mr. Latus? Of course, he was my manager. So he knew. That's what's been bugging me. Something the matter, Mr. Justice. I believe I know what is bothering our young defense attorney. You were thinking of when you discovered the body, yes? Is he right, Apollo? Yes, I was. The witness can't see. The list, the, the Mr. Latouche told me to ask the witness, and he named you. Why would he do that? He knew you were blind. I, I don't know. Just tisk. What did I just say? You need to learn to think for yourself. Meaning what? 
There's no mystery here if you recall everything he said. Think of his last word once more. The witness, Siren. We've heard them many times along with the little play acting by our defense. I remember them well myself, but that statement is not what I refer. The what he said, I mean what he said before that. Before? What came before that? Ah! That's right, he tried to tell you. And he said, can't see. He wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about the witness. I see. Too bad the defense did not. Well, her forehead. Try relaxing and looking at the facts first next time. Order, order. Recall Lammy Roar's earlier testimony. She could remember the gunshots. I thought we proved that. That's not the most important point here. Hmm? The moment he was shot, Mr. Latouse witnessed her through that window. Why else would he have named her as the witness? Ah. But I really did hear them. Two gunshots and the man's voice. Importantly, such a thing was impossible. The window was closed. We have already run a simulation, of course. But it was so clear, if I heard that voice again, I would know it in an instant. Hmm. Your Honor! What is it, Bailiff? Can't you see we're in session here? You have the results back from the investigation. The investigation! Ah, the Interpol number that Mr. Latus left us. Well, let's hear it. We will continue this cross-examination afterward. Detective Crescent, your report, please. Crescent as in Crescendo. And Darian as in Dorian. Oh my god. How can I be such an idiot? And I call myself a musician. Well, I don't and I'm not. But man... Crescendo! Darian! Oh my god! It was so simple, how could I miss it? At least... If you listen to me, if you know about music theory and stuff. I asked Interpol about that number. I'm sure you'll find their answer intriguing. Quick work as always, Darian. Well, tell us about the number! Is the defendant a secret agent? IPXX314206, the agent registered under this number is Latus. Yup! Was Romain Latus. What? Our undercover Interpol agent was Mr. Latus himself. He was apparently in the middle of an operation. So when he wrote those letters, he was trying to tell us his own identity. And the cautious killer tried to wipe them away. Mr. Latus was an undercover Interpol agent. So him being Lamoroar's manager was just a cover, most likely. There's one other important detail I found. Well, out with it. It turns out 45 caliber revolver and a murder weapon. Apparently it belonged to Romain Latus. He had an Interpol permit to carry firearms. And the registration number on the revolver matched. So the victim was killed with his own weapon, which makes sense. Hard to imagine someone who wasn't an Interpol agent with such a large revolver. Got to tie in somehow, you'd think. Yeah, somehow. Thanks for looking into that for us, Detective Grissand. It's a great help. Oh, no problem at all, Your Honor. I'll be heading out. Is it? Wait! Lamiroar, is something the matter? That voice just now, Darian? Mr. Darian, is it? It was him. I am sure of it. It was him? You aren't saying! Bruh.
Hey, no wimping out now, Polo. My B. Hey, hey, Apollo. What? Um, well, you know, um, actually nothing. I mean, something, or maybe not. Out with it, the suspense is giving me an ulcer. Well, you know, the trial today, I was thinking. If you gave it a score, what score would you give it? Score? Um, gee. I guess I would, um, or maybe, well, uh, I'm just as bad as you. See, it's so, so vague. Clearly. Machi avoided the guilty verdict, which is something. I can't say I'm any less confused about the case. The victim, Mr. Latouse. You would have guessed he was actually an undercover Interpol agent. What a mess. You don't have any idea of what he was investigating. Well, true, but we know who shot him now. Lemmy Roar told the whole court! It's another mystery, Apollo. I love mysteries. I don't. Chicken, Mr. Wright? Speaking of mysteries, what's Mr. Wright up to? I wouldn't mind asking his opinion. Now that you mention it, I haven't seen Daddy around. Why, does he see some kind of stray that just wanders in and out at will? I not say that, but he has been going out a lot. Some top secret mission, he said. Top secret? Anyway, you can't just rely on him to save the day. You got me to help you. We'll be fine. Fine, right. All time's a-wasting, as they say. Let's investigate. That's the spirit. Wherever the mundane gives to way to miracles, a word is whispered. Grab out of here! Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Hey, the other day.
Me. Then just imagine that, didn't we? We meet again! Ah, um, nice to meet you. Who are you? And could you please stop smirking like that? Ah, ah it's you! Uncle Valent! Uncle Valent? He's your uncle? No, silly! It's the Great Grammaria! Valent Grammaria! The Grand Magician! Yes, it is I, the Great Valent Grammari, as seen on television. Could you please stop smirking like that? It's been a while, Miss Trucy. Seven years to be exact. My, how you've grown! Good to see you again, Uncle Valent. You look exactly the same. Um, I hate to intrude, but what is a great do magician doing paying us a visit? I believe it was you who wished to see me, so be quick with your questions. And do not quail, quake or ship quiver, I am quite tame. Though my stardom may sear the sight, I'm quite down to earth when need calls. Let's ask him about the case, Apollo. After all, Uncle Valent's one of Daddy's best friends. That's why I call him Uncle. What? Daddy? You mean Mr. Right? No, I mean... My real Daddy. Bruh. Wait, Apollo. Don't tell me you don't know about Troop Grammaria. Troop Grammary, huh? No? That does sound kind of familiar. Oh, lost life! Lamentably listless lad! Do not know of the greatest troop of magicians on the planet! You bet you've heard the name! He made a cruise ship disappear and blew up an amusement park. Oh, and he made all this gold disappear from a safe? And then escape from a high security prison? Um, you said he's a magician? I opened the locks to hearts chained by mediocrity. This is the true miracle of troop grammary. Wait. What, Apollo? I do remember seeing you on television a long time ago. Weren't you with someone else, like a duo? A duo? Yeah, you had a partner. Something grammary. Yes, Zack. Zack Grammary. A masterful maker of magic. A capable crafter of shining showmanship. Why is everyone so quiet? Daddy. Daddy. Oh no! Once upon a time, the Troop Grammaria included two Grand Magicians. Myself, Valent Grammary, and my partner, Zack Grammary. And this Zack was... He was my real daddy. I had no idea. There wasn't much point in talking about it. Not now that he's gone. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I'm not lonely. I've got my daddy after all. You make me laugh, Apollo. Glad I'm good for comic relief at least. Not that I see daddy around much these days. Ah, I've been remiss in remembering my reasons for my visit. Reasons? Two, in fact. The first being, of course... To see you, Miss Lucy. You don't know how happy I am to see you again, Uncle Valen. I'm sure you are. Not one for modesty, are you? When I encountered you at the Coliseum the first time in seven years, I could fain contain my emotions. I wept oceans. And to learn you now defend that poor pianist, that blinded boy. It was a hot topic of talk amongst the staff, you know. And defend him you did. Eh? <laughs> well, it wasn't all my doing. Um, I'm his defense attorney, actually. My other reason for coming here today was this. 
that's a videotape? Quite so, a recording of the concert, no less. I brought it in for you, Trucy, on behalf of Troop Grammary. Will you watch it? Ah, oh, it's almost as good as it was live. So what's the word, Mysterious? Oh! 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 Oh!